Okay, here's a little video on um, using the Nano VNA to identify and put to use some RF chokes. So what I got here is uh, a bunch of chokes, well not a bunch, actually five, I bought at a ham fest. I think down in Benson, uh, back in the fall. Anyway, I wanted to RF proof my uh, audio mixer, the three different inputs and the output into the uh, amplifier that I use to power a pair of speakers here in the shack. So I only have one pair of speakers and makes everything sound good. Anyway, I had a touch of RF. I got rid of that by using some of these. But to recreate the process, the first thing I wanted to do is make sure that these were a mix 31. Let me turn this off. There you go. Um, so uh, hooked it up to the Nano VNA after we did the full blown two port calibration and found the uh, website um, data from the manufacturer. Let's see if we can make any sense out of this. There's three turn data here. And at 1 megahertz, it should be about uh, 300 ohms impedance. At 10 megahertz, about 900 ohms. And it should peak somewhere around 30 megs. That's for a ferrite or a Palomar uh, bead. These are not toroids. These are beads um, with a mix 31. The difference being the height to diameter ratio. If it's higher than it is diameter wise, it's a not considered a toroid, I guess. Anyway, stand by. Let me show you the screen. Okay, so before we do that, since it was three turn data that I got from the manufacturer, I wound three turns uh, around one and hooked it up to a little test fixture. And I did the full blown two port calibration at the end of these cables here. So, you know, even though I'm only interested in HF, I figure I might as well try to get as close as possible. But I'm going to look at these from 1 megahertz to 30 megahertz for starters. And just compare the data and see how close it is to the published for mix 31. Okay, let me get on the screen here. Hang on. Okay, I don't know if this is going to come out or not. But anyway... Once we get the uh, Nano VNA involved here, after calibration, we're sweeping from 1 megahertz to 30 megahertz. And I have a couple of markers set up to correspond with the published data from the manufacturer. So at 1 megahertz is the red marker on the far left of the screen. And uh, according to the graph published, that should be about 300 ohms impedance. And you can see it's just above 300 ohms there. And the impedance readout to the left of the graph says uh, 131.4 plus J301.4. And if you crank that into your calculator, that comes out to about 330 ohms. So looking good at 1 megahertz. Uh, marker 2 is the green one. A little bit further down at 10 megahertz. Same thing going on there. Um, published data was, says it should be somewhere around 900 and right there it looks like it's a little above 900 and you read the uh, numerical value under marker 2 848.8 plus J502.3 and that works out to be about 987 ohms and you can see the peak at 30 megahertz, the blue marker on the far left of the screen. So pretty much confirms that this is mix 31 material. Okay, so by the way, we were looking at S11 impedance on the top graph. I can, uh, I can turn off the bottom graph here. Just temporarily. And you might be able to get a better indication of uh, 
what's going on as far as a uh, S11 impedance graph goes, which is exactly what the published data is. Um, and the numerical values, I don't know if you can read them off the screen there or not, but a lot of good information there. Okay, so let me uh, bring up the other graph, which was uh, gain, hang on, or attenuation in this case. Okay, here's the S21 gain measurement. This is actually um, in dB, and this is uh, a two-port measurement where you've actually got a signal generator in between the uh, choke and some kind of a detector like an RF voltmeter or something on the other side. The Nano VNA does all that for you. Um, you know, gives you more information than you really need, but it's all right there. So, um, VSWR at, uh, what, uh, 1 megahertz is about 17 to 1. Of course, the impedance or anything there hasn't changed, but you see it has a negative almost 12 dB, if you can see it, I don't know. Uh, almost a negative 12 dB of gain, or so 12 dB of attenuation at 1 megahertz. At 10 megahertz, um, 21 dB of attenuation and at 30 megahertz um, let's see about 24 25 dB of attenuation so that's for three turns um, now if we can scale that up to 10 turns we probably get some pretty serious uh, choking impedance um, on the uh, low HF bands like um, you know, all the HF bands, as a matter of fact, 3 to 30 megahertz. And maybe I'll set up a little video to show you that later. But anyway, this is the three-turn data, and it falls exactly in line with what the manufacturer specified. So I got these at the ham fest. They were marked as being mix 31, and sure enough, they all were. And it was pretty good price. I think they were about 2 bucks a piece, and I got 5 for 10 bucks. so... What a deal that was. Okay, so there's the deal on the uh, chokes. By the way, here's my latest score here. I'm going to make up some cables. I got a bunch of pieces, piece of this, uh, several different lengths of this RG188 double shield. And to make up some connectors, I got some uh, new old stock. Maycom, very inexpensive, both right angle and straight, for about two bucks a piece. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to make up a couple extra cables for this thing. Anyway, that's a scoop. Keep tinkering. I'll uh, maybe get you some 10 turn data on this same choke later. But I'm telling you, when I put these uh, peppered, uh, the input and output lines of the mixer, this uh, Mix 31 material, it took care of any little remaining um, RF ingress into the audio system uh, at, at full power, which is a kilowatt here. So, pretty effective stuff. Alright, that's it for now. Keep tinkering.